Well, hello boys and girls, this is Daniel for Rock the JVM, and in this video I'm going to talk about how seemingly magical expressions in Scala like 20 dot seconds actually work. So in this video I'm going to discuss magical imports and implicit conversions. As always, I will recommend that you code alongside me, and whatever you need to refresh your memory as to how these seemingly magical expressions work, just refer back to this video or to its written form at rockthejvm.com forward slash blog with the link in the description. All right, so um, without further ado, let's get back to the code editor. Now, this video will make more sense if you know the basics of implicits. So we will discuss some implicits in this video. But then again, if you do know how implicits work in Scala, there's only one step to understanding how these seemingly magical methods work. So I'll cover everything that you need to know starting from the very first problem. So the question that we are addressing here in this video is the following. The int type, like a val, an integer as 45, these um, numbers, this type integer, has a very small set of methods and operators, like the plus operator or the division operator. And uh, certainly the seconds method isn't one of them. So if I try to say a, a duration attempt as 45 or an integer dot seconds, Notice that the compiler yells at us because the seconds method is unavailable. It cannot resolve symbol seconds. But if I do, let me comment this out. If I import Scala concurrent duration underscore, so the package duration, then I can suddenly say a duration as 42 dot seconds. So notice that the seconds method is actually there to attach to the int type and notice that the import has the lit up in the code editor. So the problem is how does the seemingly magical method on the int type actually work? Whereas uh, before the import we did not have the second method and now we do. So how does this magical import actually work? Now the answer is not in the import statement itself but in uh, the uh, values and types that are actually being imported. So their structure will dictate all this magic. They might as well be in scope and without the import statement and the seconds method will work just as fine as I'm going to show you shortly. So to understand how these things work we will need to go back to implicits. So I'm not going to talk about all the functionality that the implicit keyword does in Scala. We'll probably do that in another video, but we are going to focus on one kind of implicits and that is implicit classes. Implicit classes are one argument wrappers. That is a class with one constructor argument with just regular methods and fields and uh, whatever you can expect from an actual class, except that this implicit class has the implicit keyword. So there's nothing really all that fancy. And I'm going to define an implicit class. I'm going to call this my rich string. And I'm going to pass an argument a string. And notice that the compiler is now happy with me. Implicit classes can only take a single argument. So uh, they are designed to be a one argument wrapper. And inside the body of this class, you can define fields, methods, and so on and so forth as you would in a normal class. And I'm going to define a method that I'm going to call full stop. So this method full stop takes no arguments, no parentheses, will return a string, and it will simply be the string argument of the class plus the full stop uh, string. So uh, in the same way as you would end a sentence. This is the purpose of this method. Now, if I removed the implicit keyword here, this class will be a regular class. This would be a pretty uninteresting and boring class if you ask me. Now, uh, adding the implicit keyword will add some special powers in the following way. So uh, we can say, new, um, let's call this rich string as new my rich string with the string. This is a sentence without the period at the end. And uh, we can print line, for example, let's create a main method. I'm going to type in main, enter, IntelliJ is really smart. And I'm going to say rich string dot full stop. And then I'm going to print this out. 
So rich string dot full stop naturally will take the string argument and it will add the period. And this will be what's being printed to the console. So um, if I compile and run this, it will take a little bit of time and we will see this is a sentence and with a full stop at the end. All right, now adding the implicit keyword will make this my rich string behave in a pretty magical way. So watch this. I can also say this is a sentence, the string dot full stop. So the full stop method is actually the method from my rich string. Adding the implicit keyword will allow the compiler to do some further steps. So if I did not add the implicit keyword here, the full stop method would not be found to the string class. And uh, if I did add the implicit keyword, the compiler will then try to infer if there is a one argument implicit wrapper over a string that might have the full stop method so that the code can compile. So normally this code does not compile, but because I have an implicit wrapper, it does. So in the back end of the compiler, the compiler will do new my rich string with this is a sentence, and then we'll call the full stop method on that. All right, so this is what actually happens when you call full stop on this seemingly um, apparent string. So uh, this is the mechanism of implicit conversions via an implicit class. And the pattern here is called extension methods. We call this extension methods because naturally these methods do not belong to the regular type that we're applying them to. All right. So um, this will serve as a extension to the string class. Now extension methods work in the same way for duration and for a variety of other stuff. Now, um, before we get into durations, I'm going to talk about importing for a little bit. So if an implicit class like this is not written in the scope where we use the magical method like full stop. So if I move this implicit class and define that in an object, let's call this rich string ops, which is a regular naming pattern in, in libraries. So I'm going to paste the implicit class here. Notice that the code does not compile. Let me command uh, slash here. So notice that full stop here does not compile because the compiler cannot access it. But if I import it, so if I import rich string ops underscore, then suddenly everything else falls into place and my code is back to normal again. So uh, in order for us to compile these extension methods, we need to, need to have access to the implicit conversions, namely the implicit classes. And so whenever you need to import um, an implicit conversion like this, my rich string, you would just need to import the uh, container of that implicit conversion. And in most libraries, this will be some sort of object like this, rich string ops, which will be a standalone uh, object in a library, or you would need to import a package like Scala concurrent duration. And whenever you import Scala concurrent duration, you will also import the eventual uh, implicit conversions that this package might contain. And uh, if you're curious enough to see where the seconds method comes from, you can command click or control click on this method, and you will notice that the seconds method is actually a part of a trait, duration conversions, that will be implemented by some implicit class. And if you click this button over here to look at the implementations of these traits, you can go to duration int, and you will notice that the duration int is also an implicit final class that wraps an integer. And so it will also contain all the methods that the duration conversions trait also contains, including the seconds method. So uh, if we get back to our code, we also have access to a variety of other durations. Let's call this a small duration as, let's say, 300 dot millis. And we also have nanoseconds and seconds and hours and so on and so forth. And if you command click on this method, you will also have access to a variety of others. And um, I'm pretty sure by now you understand the pattern. So somebody implemented an implicit class and uh, a wrapper 
over int was actually fetched by the compiler so that the method could be actually called. Now, some packages are already imported by every Scala code, and some of these packages might also include some extension methods on numbers, for example. So let me define a range. So ranges are also an example of extension methods. For example, if I define a range as 1, 2, 10. So the 2 method is not uh, does not belong to the int class itself, but it is available as an extension method to a trait called rich int. So look at that. We have a class called rich int, which follows the same pattern as we uh, defined earlier with my rich string. So the to method will take the argument 10. So I'm pretty sure you're familiar with the infix way of um, calling methods. So 1.2 10 is equivalent to 1 space 2 space 10 and the to method will take an argument and the to method is provided as an extension method to the int class which actually belongs to the rich int final class and uh, the to method will give you back a range and you can then uh, operate on it with functional programming primitives like a range for each print line for example all right so um you can do anything with a range that you can do, for example, with a list, almost. But the pattern is completely identical. So you've now learned how extension methods work and how magical things like 42 seconds work in Scala that to make them seem like they are part of the language or the standard library. And this skill will prove very useful as you become more experienced with Scala libraries like cats. All right, so I hope this was useful. I'm Daniel, and you can find this article at rockthejvm.com forward slash blog in written form, and you can follow me on Twitter and LinkedIn with the links in the description attached to this video. Now, I'm dying for feedback, so please leave yours in the comments, and if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe, because more videos like this will be coming soon. Until next time, thank you for watching. <laughs>